Welcome to The Anxious Truth. This is the podcast that covers all things anxiety, anxiety disorders, and anxiety recovery. So if you're struggling with things like panic attacks or health anxiety or agoraphobia, this is the place for you and I'm happy that you're here. This week on The Anxious Truth, we're going to address a question that gets asked every day in the community surrounding this podcast. And that question is, but what if the anxiety comes back? And we're going to look at one of the basic principles of recovery that often gets overlooked. That means that that question isn't even really a question. So let's get to that now. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Anxious Truth. This is episode number 256 of the podcast. We are recording in May of 2023, in case you are listening from the future. My name is Drew Linsalata. I am the creator and host of The Anxious Truth. If this is the first time here listening to the podcast or watching on the YouTube channel, welcome. I'm glad you found us, and I hope you find the content helpful in some way. If you're a returning listener or viewer, well, welcome back. This week on the podcast, we're going to answer a question that gets asked every day in the community surrounding this podcast, generally by people who are working really hard to overcome their anxiety problems, and they're starting to see progress. Things are changing, and they're starting to get better, and then they get stuck and trapped in the cycle of, but, but what, what if, if it, it comes, comes back? back? I can't stop thinking that I might never get better. I can't stop thinking, what if it comes back? Now, I understand why people think that. When they start to feel a little better and things begin to change, they automatically go to, yeah, but this can't possibly last. What if it comes back? And what if it comes back in the end, as you're going to see today, isn't even really a question that needs to be asked because you're missing an important part of the recovery process. And I understand why, because you're so close to it that you really can't see that. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty here, just a very quick reminder that The Anxious Truth is more than just this podcast episode. There are books and 250-something other free podcast episodes and a ton of free social media content and workshops and all kinds of goodies that you can find on my website at theanxioustruth.com. So if you're looking for more, more help, more information, more things that might be useful to you, head on over to that website, theanxioustruth.com, and check it out. Avail yourself of all the resources and make the best use of them that you can. And if you're enjoying this work and it's helping you in some way and you want to find a way to support it, all the ways that you can do that are also on the website at theanxioustruth.com slash support if you want to check that out. Financial support is never required here, but always appreciated. And no matter what way you choose to support the work that I do, whether it's writing a podcast review or just hitting the like button on one of my YouTube videos, thank you so much. I appreciate that. You're really helping. So let's get to today's topic, which is the dreaded, but what if anxiety comes back question? And I think when we ask that question, it reveals that we are seeing the anxiety itself as the thing that changes in the recovery process. And here's news. That's not actually what happens. We often use explanations to try to, I guess, teach people what's happening. And those explanations often sort of imply, and I do this, I'm guilty of this, sort of imply that you're changing the anxiety. You're turning down the volume. I've, I've used that. You're turning off the threat response. You're lowering the volume, you're lowering the intensity, you're changing your amygdala, you're turning off your amygdala, like we say things like that. But that's not really what's going on. Yes, we are changing our level of sensitization. There's no doubt about that. I would agree with that. But in the end, the sensations of anxiety, the state of anxiety itself doesn't really change. So as a fully recovered person, I can tell you that in retrospect, I can see that my anxiety didn't change one bit, not even a little. And you might say, how can you possibly call yourself a recovered person and also say that your anxiety hasn't changed? Well, I'll tell you why. Because I do not live my life anxious all the time anymore. Why is that? Well, that's because I've learned that I don't have to be afraid of how I feel anymore. Nonetheless, I am alive and I'm always transparent about this. So I can experience anxiety sometimes because I'm just a human being. And the idea that we would eradicate anxiety or guarantee that you will never be really anxious, afraid, or panic ever again is ridiculous. Nobody can guarantee that, and that's not what you should be aiming for. Yet I live as a very normal person that can sometimes, like any other normal person, experience anxiety, sometimes a lot of anxiety. On very rare instances, I might even experience a panic attack. It's just not terribly impactful anymore like it used to be. But I can tell you unequivocally, and I think most recovered people would probably corroborate this, that the anxiety feels exactly how it felt 20 years ago. 
when I was really struggling, when I couldn't leave my house, when I needed safe people all the time. I didn't want to stay alone. I was afraid of everything. I was convinced that my food had been poisoned and I was obsessed with thoughts of death and existence. It was not a fun place to be in. But I can tell you that the sensations, the feelings, the experience of anxiety, panic, and fear now are exactly the same as they were then. So what's the difference? How can I say that most of the time I am not anxious at all? And even if I do experience anxiety, it does in no way influence my life. It doesn't influence how I make my plans or what I do or where I go or what I want to do. It, it's a non-issue. It's a thing I experience sometimes like anger or sadness or happiness or disappointment or getting the flu. That's the way anxiety is in a recovered person's life. So is it possible that you'll never panic again? <clears throat> it's certainly possible. I mean, that could be, that'd be great, right? Maybe that'll happen. But if it doesn't happen, it doesn't mean that it came back. So when we ask the question, what if it comes back? We're thinking that somehow or other, what we're doing in recovery is changing this monster that's been stalking you and attacking you, You're somehow wrestling it into a different form or pinning it down into submission. And that's tenuous because what if it gets up? It's strong, it's powerful, it's, it's so impactful on me, it controls me. I have it pinned down now, but what if I'm not strong enough and it comes back? So I understand why you see it that way because of the way you relate to it today. But when you realize that the change does not happen in the anxiety, the change happens in you, everything is different. So I never worry that it's going to come back because I don't have to worry about that. That's actually a question that I understand. I don't even have to ask. So when people say, how can you be so sure of the answer? It's not that I'm so sure of the answer. I just know that that's not even a question. That's not a valid question for me anymore. And it's not a valid question for most recovered people. Because what you really want to say is, well, what happens if I feel those things again? And I'll tell you what happens when you recognize that the process of recovery is the process of changing you. When you recognize that and you understand that all the hard work you're doing, intentionally doing scary things, practicing that, triggering, your, triggering yourself on purpose to practice and to get better at relating in a more healthy way, in a normal way to anxiety and fear and vulnerability and uncertainty, you are building a whole new repertoire of skills, navigational skills that you don't have today. And since you don't have those skills today, you feel like that thing just pins you down and just steps on your throat, and there's nothing you can do about it because you don't have the skill set to deal with it. But as you develop the skill set, your relationship with it changes in a huge way, and you're the one changing. So your heart will still race. You might experience DPDR. You might feel short of breath. You might get rubber legs. You might feel nauseous. Like, that's just anxiety doing what anxiety does in human beings. It's a very well-defined and incredibly predictable response in almost every human being walking the planet. So it doesn't change, you change. You just get really good at dealing with it. And I know a lot, this is the part where many people who are struggling now will say, oh, so I just have to deal with this like this for the rest of my life? No, because you are changing. And when you change, your relationship with it changes and you, don't, you learn that you don't have to care so much about it. It doesn't have to be the most important thing in your life and the most interesting thing in the room all the time anymore. So no, you don't deal with it the way you deal with it today because you get better at dealing with it, which means that you stop having to deal with it so much. So what if it comes back isn't really a concern anymore because we have to recognize that it's not the anxiety that we're changing. We're changing us. We change us. We get better at things. We grow. We learn. We get experienced. We get wiser. We get more adept at navigating through these negative internal experiences. And that's everything. Because that really changes the equation a lot. You don't see it anymore as an it that comes back. When you recognize that you are the part that's changing and not it, that leads you to say, well, what, do I, what will happen if I feel it again? Oh, well, I will do this, 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 and this, the things I've been doing. I will use my new skills. I will use my new understanding. I will use my new knowledge. I will use the wisdom I've gained. Like, see the difference? You stop worrying about it coming back because you just start thinking about it, feeling things and not it coming back. Well, sometimes I'm going to feel things. And now I have, I'm really good at feeling those things now. So I don't have to worry about it so much. It's not as important as it once was when it was used to be really important. Now it's not important at all. So there is no it. I never think of anxiety as an it. 
that can come and get me again. It's just a feeling like any other feeling that a person might have when they're living and breathing. So I, this is really important. And I understand why when you were in the early stages, or you're struggling, you might get stuck in that thought loop. But what if it comes back? But what if it comes back? Because you haven't yet understood that you are changing. You don't recognize your own growth. You don't recognize your new skill set. You don't recognize your new options. You don't recognize that your repertoire is getting broader and deeper and wider. You just think that you're somehow pinning down the anxiety or holding it off or, or you're somehow I'm not, it's not, not being triggered anymore. Well, and so therefore, you think it still has its living and breathing. And it's, it's just this fire breathing dragon that you've managed to somehow lock in a cave, but at any minute, it can break out of that cave and come and get me again. No, that doesn't happen at all. The dragon is still breathing the same fire. It's still standing right next to you. You just don't care anymore. So it goes away. Like there's, there's no my job here is done. I don't, I don't have anything to do. This guy isn't running anymore. She's not running anymore. She's not calling her safe people. He's not staying in the house anymore. Like, I guess we're okay. I'll just go wait until I'm really needed. And then things change. So I cannot stress enough how one of the things I would ask you to do after listening to this podcast episode is really consider that are you changing your anxiety? Or are you changing your relation to it and your skill set and your understanding and your your default response set? That's what's changing in recovery. Now I do understand also that that doesn't jive with the way a lot of people approach this problem. If you approach it as a body problem, if you approach it as a problem that requires some sort of nervous system regulation, if you are constantly approaching it as a trigger problem where you need to avoid your triggers, triggers are all over the place and you never get to avoid them all. So it will seem like this very tenuous recovery that can be shattered at any time because you're trying to control things or fix things that are kind of beyond fixing as opposed to understanding like, oh, wait a minute, I'm just going to let those things be whatever they are. And I'm going to get really better at dealing with them. I'm changing. I'm the one that's changing, not it. And then when you accept that, and you understand that you start to see it through experience through through actual real life, when you're doing it day in and day out, then I'm changing, not it happens because you stop looking at it as an it. It's no longer a special it. What if it comes back is no longer a question because I never really look at anxiety as it anymore with a capital I. It, it, the thing, right? It's, it's not a thing anymore. So I don't have to think about it, it coming back. I just think about having all the different experiences and emotions and states that people have and I'm just good at dealing with them now. Just like you will get better at dealing with them as you go through this process. So what's the moral of the story here? The moral of the story here is give yourself some credit because you are the one changing and growing and getting better and smarter and faster and stronger and wiser and, and so many different options that you're giving yourself now when your only option used to be retreat, run, hide, and avoid. And that got you into the sort of that dark place that you're trying to get out of now. And you don't have to do just that anymore. So you are changing. Give yourself the credit. You are making progress. It is staying the same. You are changing around it and therefore, in a way, nullifying it because you, you won't worry anymore that it comes back when you're not afraid of it anymore and you know you're capable. So I know that the last bit of resistance to what I'm talking about in this podcast episode usually comes from people who are struggling today, and I get that if you are, or who are new to this, or maybe just starting to go down the road of recovery, and they will think, but I don't understand if I have this experience in two years that I'm having today, that's not progress. That's not recovery. I can't be recovered if I feel the way I feel today. But when you say that you're actually missing the point because you haven't had enough time and you have not lived the experiences yet, you're projecting you, the today version of you into the future and the today version of you won't be there in the future. So the, the 2006 version of Drew isn't here in 2023. He, he doesn't, he's not here. He changed. Like 2023 Drew is very different than, 20, than 2006 Drew. So when I feel the same things that he felt, it's a different version of me feeling them and relating to them in a totally different way. So the resistance to this idea and the argument, if you feel the things, it means it came back. And how can I call that recovery? And that's beyond my control is based on you projecting the today version of you into the future when that today version of you theoretically 
because of this process that you're working on so hard. And I commend you for that. The, the today version of you stops existing. You're a better version of you. You're a wider, deeper, smarter, wiser, more capable version of you with way more options than today has today version of you has. So please keep that in mind. When you want to get stuck, or when you get stuck in the thought, what if it net what if it comes back? But what if it comes back? But what if it comes back? Remind yourself that Oh, this is today me worrying about how today me would feel if I'm still today me in five years, but I won't be that person in five years every day I get a little different. And since I'm the part of this that's changing not the anxiety. Every time I learn something new, every time I try something new, every time I practice something, every time I have a different outcome than I used to have, I am getting further away from the scared, limited, avoidant, hiding, running version of me that 100% would think that I should if I feel this way, it's a disaster. You just won't think that anymore because you are changing. So you won't even ask the question anymore. What if it comes back? It's very hard for you to conceptualize that. And when people ask me that question, and I try to answer it, I often get blank stares. But that's because I can speak to you from years down the road, you don't have those years yet. So I guess I'm asking you in a certain way to, to just take it at face value when I tell you when a recovered person tells you when somebody who's got a five year head start on you tells you these things, you have to understand that, oh, they have five years worth of experiences that I haven't had yet. They learned all the lessons they see their change, they see their growth, they see their new strength. I haven't had the chance yet to see that in myself, I'm working on it. So what if it comes back isn't a question, the question is like, how do I keep changing? How do I keep improving? That is the better question. If you want to fixate on a question, fixate on that one, because the answer to that question precludes asking the first. So there you go. <laughs> That's a thing I haven't said in a podcast in a while. Evidently, it used to be a thing I would say all the time. But there you go. That was like 17 minutes of me just near ranting at you. I hope it wasn't too much. I, I feel like I gave you a fire hose of words here because it's something that I feel really strongly about. And I, I want to express it as clearly as strongly as I can to you. Being worried that it's going to come back doesn't mean that you have to be worried about it coming back. That's just a today version of you having a today worry about a, ver a version of you that doesn't exist yet and won't in the future. So it's okay to just leave that fear there. What if it comes back? All right, be afraid that it'll come back, then go do something. Go do something instead of deciding that thinking that means you shouldn't do anything. That would be the worst mistake you could make. I keep thinking what if it comes back? Okay, then go ahead and think that because you can't decide to not have a thought. But while you're thinking that, go keep changing and learning and improving and getting stronger and wiser and deeper and building those options. Then the question that you're so worried about won't even matter anymore. Trust me on this one. And that is episode 256 of the anxious truth in the books on trying to, you know, answer the question, what if it comes back and giving you the reasons why that question doesn't even have to be a question because you change not the anxiety. You know, the podcast episode is over because music. That is, as always, at the end of the podcast, especially recently, is Afterglow by my friend Ben Drake, who wrote that song, at least in part inspired by this podcast and words that he heard here. And he's let me use it ever since, which I'm very grateful for. So you can find that song and more about Ben on his website at bendrakemusic.com. If you pop on over there, tell him I sent you and tell him I said hello. Uh, and I'm going to ask you, as always, if you are listening to the podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or some app or platform that lets you rate and review the podcast, leave a five-star rating if you like it. And if you really like it, maybe take a second and write a quick review because that's how more people find the podcast and we get to help more people that way, which is why I do this to begin with. And of course, if you're watching on YouTube or this one listening on YouTube, like the video, leave a comment. I will circle back and answer you. I promise I do it a couple of times a week. And subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so you know when I upload new content. And that's it. We are done for this week. Work on these things. Keep moving forward. Every little step matters. It really does. Because even when you're worried that you'll never get better or it might come back, the best thing that you can do to that is go ahead and get better even while you're worried about that. I know that sounds ridiculous, but that's your job. And I know you can do it. Thanks for listening. I will see you again next week. Looking back or dwelling on the past You know you'll never get another chance So go and live your life